Tabo Bester's es Tabo Bester. On the Tabo Bester escape incident. Somehow she told me her dreams got very close. You can imagine if you're taking a 26-hour bus and you took four days to get it, you're going to know a lot about each other. Mm. If I wanted to stay, I could have killed her in Durban. I could have killed her the first night we got to Cape Town. So that was not my intentions at all. Mm. If I wanted to kill her, I could have got her into <clears throat> Ntata, where there's much less people than got into a bush BNP there, killed mm. her there. So my intentions was never to kill anyone. My intentions were, with her, was straightforward. I liked her. And mm. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel and thank you very much for joining me here again today. Last week we spoke about the case of the Dupria family murders and that is the case about how a father took the lives of his entire family for reasons that will never be confirmed. And I'll link that case up here for you if you'd like to give it a watch. But today we're going to talk about a case that is an incredibly hot topic at the moment and that is the case of Tabu Bester. And that's even if this is his real name. This man feels like the man, the myth, and the absolute criminal. And I feel like they will make a movie out of this or show Max will eventually get hold of this and make a movie out of this because it is absolutely wild what went down and also how really bizarre this case is. And you think you know what's happening in this case, but as South Africans, we don't even know what's happening in this case. So this case is a lot. And with that being said, let's get into today's case. Intended for mature audiences in this on. case we are heading back to may of 2022 where a man horrifically known as the facebook rapist allegedly burnt to death in his cell in mangaung prison in bloemfontein south africa tabu bester was a convicted rapist who was sent to prison in 2012. Tabu was given a life sentence for the murder of a Johannesburg model and car sales lady and his apparent girlfriend, Nomfundu Tahulu, and it is believed that Tabu and Nomfundu were on holiday together in Cape Town. Tabu Bester allegedly stabbed 23-year-old Nomfundu in her chest while he and her were allegedly having breakfast together at an Airbnb in Cape Town and this all took place in September of 2011. Some sources did say that Tabo and Numfundu were having an altercation and things just got out of hand. Now before we get into the rest of Tabo's crimes I want to talk about the trial that he stood for the murder of his girlfriend and during the trial he actually said so it, 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 it drained me personally, mm. night and day. It, it ate me inside. I could not sleep. When I was arrested for the robbery in Alberton, the reason why I did that is because I felt that that's not me. Mm. And I wanted to do right where I did wrong. Mm. And I wanted to take responsibility, if that's the word. I look at these charges and I don't think it's me. Mm. I really don't think it's me. That's why I pleaded guilty. and. To the murder case, I can't plead guilty to murdering her because I did not intentionally want to kill her. Mm. But I can plead guilty on the fact of bringing a knife into her presence. That I can plead guilty. Mm. And how she got stabbed, I don't know. But it, I do, if there was, if, if I have to plead guilty in, in any regard there, I will plead guilty that I did bring the knife into the room and we had a fight that she got stabbed. So that is what he said in trial. He said that basically, yeah, he was guilty of her death, but he wasn't guilty of killing her because things got out of hand and he couldn't have possibly been guilty for things getting out of hand and being the cause of her death. Even though he was the one who stabbed her to death, but that was besides the point for Tabo. But that was not the only crime that he was convicted on because he was known as the Facebook rapist. Tabo was also found guilty of raping two other models in October of 2011. So remember, he murdered his girlfriend, allegedly, in September of 2011. Then he went on to rape two other women in October of 2011. And the reason why Facebook was used in all of this was because Tabo actually used this as a way of communicating with the woman. So he would go and he would look for women that he obviously found attractive and he would then message them specifically if they were known as models on their little profile. And he would message them saying that he was an international scout looking for beautiful women from all over the world. And then Tabo would talk to them, he would gain their trust and eventually he would ask them to meet them somewhere. Once these women would then meet Tabo out in public, he would eventually coerce them into going somewhere more private, where then he would take out a knife and threaten their lives. Once he got these women into a private area and he also got the knife out, he would then rape them. 
So we do have a background now. Oh, I forgot to say that he was sentenced to 50 years behind bars. So 25 years, a life sentence for the murder of his girlfriend, Mfundu. And then he was sentenced to a life sentence for the two rapes as well. And the people who were at the trial said that Tabo didn't seem remorseful at all, allegedly. He seemed incredibly focused and incredibly angry. He was so mad that he was caught. He didn't believe that what he was doing was wrong. He was just somehow involved, but he didn't do what they were claiming apparently. So 50 years for Tabo and now he was going to be sent to Mangaung prison. So now that we have a little bit of background, let's get into the nitty gritty of this case. So on the 3rd of May 2022, at around 3 o'clock in the morning, an officer at a maximum security facility, which we now know is Mangaung prison, reportedly said that he could smell smoke coming from one of the prisoner's cells. So the guard now runs over to the cell and he sees that inside the cell is a body burnt to an absolute crisp lying underneath a mattress. He said that the body was burnt beyond recognition and he then called the other guards to come and have a look. They opened the cell and they tried to see if there was any sign of life, but there was nothing. He was absolutely burnt. As a side note, these cells that they went into, most of them were single cells. So the cell had no one else in it besides the burnt body. So the cell that this guard went running to was the cell of Tabu Besta. So logic says that if you're in a prison, you get put into your cell and they lock the doors for the night. There's no way that you're getting in or out there. So whoever they put into that cell and whenever they do roll call for the night, if they do, you assume that the person who's in the cell is the person who has now been burnt to a crisp. So it was then said that Tabu Besta had now been burnt to a crisp inside Manga Ung prison. And you would assume that it would be Tabu since he was locked in that prison that night right? So the guards then sent out notification that a prisoner had passed away on the property from unknown causes and that they believed the man who was inside the cell was Tabu Besta. Media got a hold of this and it spread like wildfire that Tabu had passed away in this fire. The whole country believed it and that's what we believed really. So because Tabu had reportedly passed away from unknown causes or undetermined causes and even though the body had been burned to a crisp they couldn't assume that that was his cause of death. So because he had an unknown cause of death and because he passed away on prison property it is law that they have to investigate why the prisoner passed away, how did they pass away and if there's any foul play involved. So Tabu's body was then sent to the coroner's office or the pathologists to have a look. So we know that if something hectic like that happens anywhere, any place, in any workplace, we know that people are going to start to skinner and they want to know what the gossip is. And we say skinner in South Africa, it just means gossip. So the guards are having a chat, the investigators are having a chat on what could have happened to Tabor. And we will talk about the guards later, but for now let's focus on Tabor's apparent death. So people either speculated that Tabor tried to take his own life or that he had been murdered. So when investigations were being done, murder seemed to be the most likely trail that we were going to follow for why Tabor was burned in his cell. Because as mentioned earlier, there was no noise happening. The guard only saw smoke. He didn't hear anyone scream. He saw smoke before he knew that there was a body being burnt. The coroner also found that there was no smoke inhalation in the lungs. There was no damage to the lungs at all in terms of smoke. The body also had some pretty massive and hectic blunt force trauma to the head. And also the body had indications of stab wounds through some of the organs that were still viable. So the coroners believe that it's most probable that this person passed away from being murdered. And that this person was already dead when the fire started in that cell. But if we go back to the theory of Tabor taking his own life, I guess we have to say that it's not impossible if we take away the blunt force trauma to the head the stab wounds also the no smoke inhalation in the lungs we take all that away I guess it is plausible that someone could set themselves alight but I don't think that that is a way that someone would want to take their own life it is incredibly slow it's incredibly painful but if we take that aside as well the guards also noticed that Tabo a couple days before this whole incident occurred seemed uncharacteristically happy the guards and people who knew him said he was a little bit of a miserable person or just a very serious person apparently and during the couple of days that led up to this body being found in the cell Tabo was incredibly excited he was happy and he even said to some people that he's going to get out of here he's going away and he kept telling this to people and bringing such a happy and positive vibe to the prison 
So because most of the evidence, actually almost all of the evidence, and also at the mere fact that the entire cell smelt of petrol, the investigators and the coroner felt quite happily that this was definitely a murder case. And now they changed the docket from suicide to murder. DNA was also taken from the body that was found inside the cell, but all seemed likely that Tabo Besta passed away in this prison. Now I know things do generally take quite a long time in South Africa, and I think that they were dealing with quite difficult circumstances in how bad the body had been burnt but things were taking a very long time and South Africa was getting impatient but also South Africa noticed that things weren't now adding up at all but before we get into the things that aren't adding up I want to talk about Manguang prison and this prison is a private prison it's one of the most hectically reinforced max prisons almost in the entire world it is a very well protected prison in terms of the prisoners getting out it has lots of fences before you actually get to the prison it has CCTV it has state-of-the-art technology inside it has those gates that automatically close so you don't necessarily need a key to all of the cells like in Polesmore or stuff like that but not only that the prison also hired its own staff so it didn't only have correctional officers from the government it also had private staff or private security wandering the premises as well in order to protect the inmates and protect South Africa so let's just keep that in mind as well when we go through the case it's supposed to be a maximum security prison equipped with the latest technology. Mangawung Correctional Center is home to some of the most dangerous criminals. It's also the scene of the most calculated and elaborate escape this country has ever seen. But the things that weren't adding up and that what South Africa was now picking up on were these following things. To start with, the charred body's height at the time of the autopsy was 1.45 meters, but the police mugshot of Tabo Bester stood taller than 1.7 meters when he was first incarcerated. A source said that before the fire broke out, a prison official placed Tabo in the corner cell all by himself. This cell was rarely ever used because it was difficult for CCTV cameras to see into it. The CCTV cameras that were pointing to the exit of the prison were apparently not on or not at the correct angle just before 3 a.m. And this happened to be also seconds before the smoke was spotted. However, at the edge of the frame of the CCTV footage captured, the camera that night, two people could be seen exiting the prison very quickly. But what is the most intriguing piece of evidence that is so far allegedly been found of Tabor was a photo taken from June of 2022, almost two months after he apparently had passed away, which shows a man who looks just like Tabor shopping in Santon City, Johannesburg, South Africa. Now those are some of the very strange things that people have noticed, but also let's take the sighting of Tabor with a pinch of salt. I understand that sightings can be quite hectic, but he seems to have now a beard and very big glasses on, which I mean in movies is always the perfect disguise but if we go back to some of the strangeness of, that we talked about earlier I don't see how someone could lose around 30 centimeters in height after being burned I understand that you might lose some because you lose skin and flesh and muscle and all of that but that's quite a lot of height also I find it quite interesting that Tabo was put into a cell in the corner at the back where they knew that CCTV footage wasn't operating that often it could have just been a coincidence maybe not but I also thought that prisoners had like predetermined cells like you would go into your cell at night I didn't think that you could go magically into different cells or whichever cell you felt like that night maybe I'm wrong I'm not sure how prisons work internally and I also don't know how a private prison works but I do find it strange but if you think that's strange it gets even worse now before we get into more of the case I do want to report that according to some sources on the internet so I could be wrong but during the time last year so 2022 October and December 12,000 cases of rape had been reported and that's only in just two months or three months so we clearly in South Africa have an absolute pandemic and we know we have a pandemic so when news was getting out about Tabo Bester and something not fitting quite right after May of 2022 there were a lot of protests happening in South Africa women were angry that this man was getting out after what he had just done and that he showed no remorse for it so there were protests about this there were protests that he even got out and there was a lot of uproar and South Africa was upset. People were raising their concerns about Tabo Bester's case and apparently in June of 2022, so only a month after Tabo Bester had apparently died in a fire inside the prison, one of the guards who were working in the prison contacted the Department of Correctional Services and asked the guys on top 
do you know that the guy who allegedly burned to death in this prison is allegedly not even dead and he's escaped? And he asked this specifically to the Department of Correctional Services, but they never got back to him. So while in prison, Tabo, if that's even his name, was still hustling and he was still trying to get money. And apparently he was still working on a multi-million rand company while in prison. It was alleged that even though Tabo was incarcerated inside this prison, he would continue to scam people and he now called himself Tom to certain people. Tom posed as the chairman of 21st Century Media Company, which is a scam event and digital media company. It does not exist for real under Tabo being the boss, which was made to look like a subsidiary of 21st Century Fox. The company had luxurious offices in Santon and employed more than 30 staff who were apparently given brand new laptops and all that fancy stuff. So I'm not even kidding you. Assuming the personality of Tom, Tabo, when he was Tom, he was running this multi-million rand company. And he even managed to host a glitzy, glamorous event at a very high-end hotel in Johannesburg. And Tabo was even so full of himself that he made an appearance on the screens inside the event. And I got a photo. I can show you. So there's a photo of Taubo at this event and he made the entire audience sing happy birthday to him all while he was incarcerated. Guys, he was still in prison. He was in prison. He put on a suit. He did a video call and he pretended that he was still running this company. It's absolutely like I'm mind blown. You've got to give him props for the way he runs a fictitious business. They absolutely believe that 21st century media existed. And the attendees who came were very high profile media personnel. They were people from the entertainment industry. They were very high profile people here in South Africa, at least. And it was also made to believe that the reason that Tabo couldn't attend the event was because he was in New York and not in a prison that was around 400 kilometers away from this event. How mad though? Like it's absolutely wild. He also had a profile and everything about what the company was and he was very, very proud of his company. Now, if we fast forward to a couple of days ago, actually, so we've left 2022 and we're now at the 26th of March, 2023. On Saturday, the 26th of March, South Africa's Department of Correctional Services issued a statement confirming that the body found charred beyond recognition in May of 2022 was not that of Tabo Bester, confirming that he had indeed escaped. The department had also issued a manhunt for Tabo Bester and either suspended or dismissed officers who were on duty the morning that Bester escaped. The director of Mangaung Correctional Services Center has lost effective control of the facility to restore safety and security by taking control of the correctional center by means of appointing a temporary manager. This temporary manager will perform the functions of the director. In this instance, I have appointed Mr. Patrick Ali Mashabataha as the temporary manager of Mangaung Correctional Facility with immediate effect. Government officials say everyone who assisted in the escape must be held accountable. The reality is that um, he must be arrested and be recaptured wherever he is and whoever played a role to help him to escape from the facility must also be they must also be arrested and whoever also played a role beyond uh, his escape from the facility to help him outside and all those things all of them must be people of interest so at the end of the day this has been a huge uh, public embarrassment for the government of the Republic of South Africa. And the fact that Tabo Bester has actually confirmed to have escaped and he is currently an escaped fugitive in South Africa probably leaves more questions that we have answers to. But if we go back to the security, remember I said that this prison had private security, so they hired whoever they wanted to. Well, apparently G4S, I think it is, is the security company currently employed by the prison. But once their term comes to end or their contract comes to end, they will no longer be sticking with this company. And I think that is in 2026 or around there. So the questions that we clearly need answers to is who was the body burnt inside that cell? How did they then get the body into the cell? According to some media, they said that there was a bucky that came into the prison early that morning, which was unregistered and unreported. 
and it is believed that a dead body was already brought in via this bucky. So this was thought of for months. This was very, very calculated. But back to the questions, who is this person that was murdered and brought into the prison? How did Tabo escape from his cell? Not only from his cell, but one of the biggest maximum security prisons, not only in South Africa, but a very well-renowned security prison in the world. How did he leave without notifying anybody? How did no one notice that he left? Who helped Tabo leave? And also, I think one of the most fascinating questions in this case is why did it take almost a year for people to confirm that the DNA from this body was not Tabo Bester's body? We could also ask, where is Tabo now? Is he still in South Africa? Is he still really living in Santon from that picture that I showed you earlier? And also, I find it fascinating that Tabo could run an almost 30-person business from inside prison, how did he manage to do that? How did he have the resources? How did he have the time? Well, he obviously has the time, but how did, like, it's wild. And also there were some articles that said that between June and September of 2022, so last year when he escaped, there were models who were being messaged by some guy named Tabo Bester asking them if they wanted to model and that he was a guy from overseas looking and scouting for women. But he was also saying that he was looking for these women for a fake Netflix show when they went to Google about it. There was nothing about it. And there were quite a few women who reported this. So this case of Tabo Bester not only shows the blatant disregard and intense corruption corruption that is in our government facilities. But also the thing that gets me is that this was a private prison. So privately, people organized for Tabo Bester to escape this prison. Yes, there were government officials working here, but the entire prison is private. Private security, some government security. But someone helped Tabo get out of this place. They helped him bring in a body. They helped him bring in this bucky that no one noticed. They put him in that corner cell or quietly, knowing what was going to happen that night. They brought this body up the stairs to the cell, past guards, past other inmates, I assume. And just the ability to make everybody keep quiet is just absolutely unbelievable how deep this corruption or how deep this crime of Tabor's has run. But I do believe that now that Tabor has been exposed and that his face is everywhere, even more so than when he was first convicted, that he will probably be found again and sent probably back to the same prison. And I'm not sure if he's left the country. I'm sure you can't leave when your name is now being looked up for a manhunt. But it is maybe possible that he could get a fake passport. He made a fake company and he made people believe him. But we will have to keep our fingers on the pulse with this case. It is still incredibly active. He is still an escaped convict. But I do think that Tabor's days are numbered and that we will find him soon, hopefully. But not only do we need to find the escaped convict that is Tabor Bester, but also we need to bring him back for the justice of the woman that he horribly assaulted and murdered. But let me know what you think of this case down below. It is wild. But I hope that you all have a really nice weekend. I'm actually off to Karma's this weekend in Steady's. I'm very excited to go and see all the local South African brands and artists and just to see what beautiful talent we have. But besides that, please stay safe out there. Please don't talk to strangers. And we'll see you again next week. Bye.